Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 85 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have a bit of a crazy little contraption plan for today. I would like to get more into Batania uh, and do some more advanced things. Now clearly we have a bunch of mana pools that are just doing a great old job of uh, hanging out and doing their thing. And I'm very pleased that they're doing what I want them to do. Uh, let's see, I want to snag my wand cool here. That's interesting. I was hoping there was a way I could figure out which one of these. All right, this guy probably absorbs mana, I think, from all the others, right? That's how we had it set up? Yeah, I think that's what we did. Cool, and you're powering the Botanical Brewery and the Runic Altar. Just kind of refreshing my own memory, as well as yours, about how this whole contraption down here works. Uh, now there's a bit of bad news and a bit of good news. The bad news is the Thermal Lilies are not quite as powerful as they used to be. So we're probably going to ditch that uh, contraption down there. So they're not going to really do uh, or, or, or function the way they used to function. We're going to probably get rid of them. Um, and the TNT system I had is cool, but it's very complex. And I'd like to build a uh, more simplistic, but also more powerful mana generation mechanic, which I think I've come up with some really cool and interesting ways to do. So we're going to work on that this episode. But first, I'd like to have access to these barrels in my AE system. So I've got many, many barrels here, and this thing's probably full of carrots, so that's cool. Let's get ourselves some things. Um, first off, did I ever teach this thing how to make sticks? I better have. Good. All right. So let's get some wood, convert it into planks, and then I want to teach this thing how to make a few things. So I want to create some Java upgrades. So we're going to get a Mark 1 upgrade. And in order to get that, we're going to need fences. So we better teach this thing uh, how to do that. Let's actually just do it with sticks in case. There we go. Cool. Encode that. We'll also want to teach this thing what? Uh, Mark 2 structural upgrades. Encode that pattern. And we'll probably want to also teach it how to make a void upgrade. We'll encode that. And uh, let's see, storage upgrades. We might want to do that one. That wouldn't be terrible. In order to do that, though, we're going to want to teach it how to actually make a better barrel. So encode that. And slabs. Do we know how to make slabs? Oak wood slabs? No, we do not. But we do know how to make chests, right? No, we do not either. Okay, well, now we're gonna teach it. One and two. Oh, we're out of um, blank patterns. I do recall that I wanted to do something along the lines of uh, heading down to the nether and getting some nether type ores like nether, rack, or, uh, nether uh, quartz and some glowstone. We'll see about doing that. But for now, we should have taught this thing everything he needs to know to uh, be able to do what I want him to do, which is get me some Java upgrades. Sweet. I like having this interface terminal. It is very cool. So if we went in here and did upgrade, I should be able to, I want to get four of these, start. We'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of you start. Eight of these guys. And eight of these guys. That sounds like a fun plan to me. Cool. So we've got what we want to get. So Java upgrades uh, add slots, so you get one slot for the Mark 1, you get three additional slots for the Mark 2, and then different things use slots. Uh, for example, the Void upgrade uses two, uh, the Storage upgrade uses one, and then there's some higher tier storage upgrades if you want to get really crazy um, and do some other cool stuff. Uh, there's like B space upgrades, which allow them to act kind of like ender chests. Uh, you can get them to emit redstone, act as hoppers, all kinds of neat things you can do with Java barrels uh, that I've unfortunately not really done much with. But like I said, there's plenty of cool things you can do. So let's upgrade these guys all to Mark 1 and then upgrade them to Mark 2. We're going to throw some storage upgrades in there. And then all of a sudden, you'll see... Let me go turn off my modules, Java. I always like to cut this down and every time there's an update to the pack 
I have to change it. There we go. Far less information shown there. The other thing I like to change, by the way, um, just so you guys know, is the harvestability upgrade. Where's that one? Um, I like it to be sneak only for effective tool, um, silk touchability, harvestability. There we go. Cool. So now it's far less information, but when I hold shift, it tells me what the effective tool is and the harvest level and all that. Just a little trick for y'all. All right, so you're chewing all that stuff up, but wow, you're doing a really bad job of replanting, aren't you? Oh, there we go, okay. Much better. I was gonna say, don't forget that part. So by upgrading these barrels, they can hold more than two stacks, but the other upgrade I wanna put in them now is the void upgrade. This is gonna be an important upgrade. So one, two, three, four, cool. And you'll see that in the bottom left there, pretty neat. I like it. So you can see it's currently level two. It's got one uh, uh, storage upgrade available. And it's got the void upgrade. What that does is it'll void any excess items. So it'll kind of act like um, a, a void chest after it's full. So we'll be able to hold 128 stacks of everything. And then it, once it's full, it will go ahead and, uh, you know, do its thing. So let's upgrade all these barrels too while we're at it. Uh, I'll probably eventually put void upgrades in here, but... There you go, good job. Just like destroyed the power storage of this thing, but that's okay. Nice. I should probably at some point get it to accept more power, but it is its own little self-sustaining system, so it's all kind of good. Nice, I like it. So let's put this stuff away. <laughs> Look at that, we already have 80 stacks. That was really quick. Um, it must have had a large backlog. Yeah, I think it probably had a bunch of backlog in some, uh, this chest here was probably full of wood. So that's cool. Uh, the reason I wanted to do that, by the way, is because now I want to get these guys added to our AE system. So believe me, this all has something to do with my plans. But we're going to get these guys added to the AE system so I have access to all the saplings and wood and apples and wheat and carrots and potatoes from AE. So let me get, uh, let's see, we're going to want to snag a few things from the AE system. We're going to want uh, a couple P2P connectors. Let's do two of them start. Uh, let's also get some cables. We'll probably want my smart cabling and uh, some glass cable. We're probably going to need more of this. So let's get like 50 of them. That should be nice and quick. And uh, that should be cool. I'll snag some dense cable, but if we look, um, this is kind of a nice thing. We looked out a little bit in, in this fact, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's exactly how many channels a standard uh, Fluix cable can handle. So we shouldn't need any dense cables. So I'm just gonna run P to P over there and then we should be cool. Um, so let's get out, put them in our bags, our this thing, and that should be pretty much all I need. I might just need a few more of my cables, which should be done cooking by now. Nice. All right, so let's see what I've got up here that I can tap into. So we've got this line, which is currently using three of eight channels available. And then we've got this line, which is currently using three of eight. And this one I think is the one, if I jump into enter mini mode, we should be able to follow this through. This is the one that leads all the way over nice to here right so maybe we pop out here and see where we're at all right i could probably continue this along so let's do this i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna go one two and then straight through to here and we should be able to follow this through there it is Cool. We can just run this cable down. Now remember this is the sub P2P network thingy. And what I'll do then probably is, this is the planter, right? So over here is where our barrels are. Now the downside, the only like thing that's kind of bugging me a little bit is I will need to put my storage buses on some side of this and question is where I could run it across the top that might not be terrible yeah I'll probably want to do that let's 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 do that let's run it across the top so let's get some storage upgrades right or storage modules 
eight of them get cooking. And while those cook, I can come down here. probably wind up not having this one. We'll run it through over to here. And then straight up here. What did you just connect to? Oh, nothing. Cool. And then I should have my storage upgrades available. Nice. Storage bus is ready to go. And here's where I'll use my smart cable. And you know, what we're probably going to want to do is um, let's terminate the P2P connection a little bit further down here. That's right, I wanted to terminate that. Let's do it like here. So we'll put our P2P here. And then let me just run over. Tiny Ender Mini is tiny. We will take our cable thing here. I think this is the one I want to do. So shift right click this guy, successfully saved settings. And then zoom right over to here. Loaded, cool. And then we can this. And I decided I wanted, man, it's very weird being an Ender Mini sometimes. Cool. So that should be lit up in a moment with four channels in use, I would think. There we go. And I should have access to wheat, carrots, and potatoes from our AE system now. Yes, look, wheat, carrots, potatoes, nice. I'm gonna go do the exact same thing over here. I'm just gonna run these cables across, I'll do it off camera, and then we'll be right back to work on the next stage of this crazy build I have in mind. So then here, we'll run this across here. Storage buses, one, two, three, four. Smart cable, one, two, three, four, and that should light up, and we should have a bunch of wood and saplings and apples and all that cool stuff available for us to use. One of eight, why are you fluctuating? Don't tell me I'm already capped out on channels down there. That's usually what that means. Let's whack that for a minute and see. I'd be shocked if I already burned up all those channels, but the way life goes. Uh, we might have to rearrange, but let's see. Uh, you are, oh yeah, you are capped out. Look at you, 32 already. That's not good. All right, I will come back in a minute when I decide how to deal with that. All right, so let's do this. We'll do an Emmy dense cable. That'll go here to here, but we're gonna paint it white. And then we'll place our P to P connector here with a smart cable here. That should be five channels now. We will set this guy to save. And then when we go down here, we will load. So if we come back, what we should find is these channels freed up. We've got 28 available now, and these are now using four. Nice. But we're still using the five here. Perfect. That is awesome. So we still have room. And then if we come over here to our wood farm, whoosh, we can reconnect this guy and should have four channels available in a minute. Nice, that's cool. So now if we check, we should have our wood, charcoal, awesome. That is what I want to see. Saplings, beautiful. So we will uh, now have access to all the wood in the world as well as all the wheat and carrots and everything. And trust me, there's a reason for this. We're getting to it. We'll be there in a minute. Let me next find out what I want to do next. 
Hey guys, we're back. Um, I needed a couple cows. I found one. So I figured I might as well spawn a few more. Go, spawner, go. Dun, 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 dun. Spawn for me a cow. Thank you. That's one. I uh, had just a couple safari nets laying around. Oh, oh, did I get them or is that a mid-death one? Yes, it was a mid-death one. Nice. If you capture them as they're dying, sometimes they'll die when you release them, which is kind of funny. You know, that's enough cows. Um, you lay a spawner. You go back in there. But we can turn this off now because we don't need him anymore. Three cows should be sufficient. So now that I've got some cows, let's get ourselves some paving stone of wardings, head back to the base, and check out what we're going to do with it. So uh, these cows are going to be used for a very specific purpose. Uh, I'm going to place my paving stone of warding, I think, um, right about here. Cool. There we go. And we've got our rancher. That is a very specific and useful block. Cool. Uh, I should check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it will not be a problem. Precision sledgehammer. Yeah, we'll be good in terms of the size there. So uh, knowing that we're cool there, we can go ahead and place down our cows like so. One, two, three. Nice. So the rancher uh, has a very particular use. It can get milk out of cows. Uh, now it can only do it uh, once per cow, about every uh, 400 ticks or so. Uh, so that's like 20 seconds, I think, right? So um, no, that's, yeah, something like that. Anyway, the point is you'll get you know your milk every so often, cool. So uh, we'll let this thing run, he'll start collecting milk. Now, what do I wanna do with this milk? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to have, I think I'm gonna put it right about here. That eh, might not be a terrible spot for it. And let's get ourselves a liquid transfer node and some transfer pipes. And while I'm at it, I can put these guys away. We're going to pump the milk out of the rancher and dump it directly into here. So we'll have a blue side here that can accept milk. Cool, looking good. So what do we need cows and milk for? Well, why don't I show you? There is a particular flower from Batania that's very useful when it comes to things like cake. And we're gonna be using this flower for producing our cool stuff. Uh, so by encoding this pattern right here, uh, actually, you know what, I'm gonna leave these guys out. That's what I'm gonna do. So let's encode that pattern like so. We'll remove the milk buckets. So that we'd basically say, um, let's do it like this, right? So uh, creates one cake with one egg, two sugar, and three wheat. Okay, so one egg, two sugar, and three wheat should create a cake. Uh, we're going to want a item duct. If we happen to have some impulse ones, that would be cool. And then we just need uh, some cables and maybe a P2P connector. So let's create one of these. And some cabling while we're at it. So you, let's create a few more smarts while we're there. Oh, so out of glowstone. I did say I wanted to go to the nether and quarry there, sort of. But I wanted to get this going first. And then we'll look at getting more glowstone. So we should have around here somewhere a place we can tap into. There it is. Um, so if I do the P2P connection here, and I should even be able to just load directly up the memory card, should still remember from the work I was doing a minute ago. So what I'll do here then is, let's do this. We'll say milk can come in this side, items can come in the back, and that's where we'll put our, so we'll put this thing up here interface cool and once this thing lights up we'll just test it real quick to make sure everything loaded up correctly one channel in use um, we can do the top will be the output of items that are created okay and then we'll say oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all how did I even do that Let's do this. I wanted to put impulse item ducts 
here to here. So then anytime the appropriate items go in there, we should be cool. So we can cover this up, and that looks halfway decent. I'll put up some covers or something there in a minute, but does that look cool? So all I should need now is a schematic, and then we'll be in really good shape. And I'll also need on me my wheat, egg, sugar, and milk bucket. Because I'll need to program the schematic with this. So we'll put this in here. And we will configure this guy. Egg in the middle, sugar on the sides. Is it that? And that? Yes. Check. Cool. So all we need now is power, and we can probably run that underneath somewhere. Uh, so where do I have power that I can tap into? There must be a power line around here somewhere. I think there's some actually right here. So let's jump into bat mode. Dun, 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 dun. Pretty sure there's a power line right behind this wall. Look at that. Cool. And I happen to have some hardened fluid ducts on me. Remember, fluid duct, or, uh, flux ducts are cool because they can do cool things, like I just showed you. Connect different levels to each other. So there's the rancher, so we're going to want power into that thing, definitely. There's the cyclic assembler. So now you guys should be getting power. Very good. And very good. So you're producing milk. You are creating cakes. So basically, if I were to come in here now, oh, the interface needs his encoded pattern. If I asked for cake times 10 start, we should see cakes going in there. Nice. And the milk is being used three buckets at a time. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, so we might want a few more cows in here, or we might want some kind of buffer. Um, a tank might not be a terrible idea. I might do that. Yeah, let's get a tank to store a bunch of milk. That would be cool. So let's see. Tanks. So I can put most of this stuff away. Let's go with... That's hardened. So if I can upgrade this guy to reinforced... That should be pretty good. And let's do fluid ducts while we're at it. So hardened fluid ducts with, we'll do the reinforced servo. So let's do, Oh, cool. Yeah, auto outputs. That's nice to know. And if I give this guy a hit with a wrench, boom, he should output mode directly into there. That is awesome. So uh, a few more cows probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. Make a cow, please. Thank you. Uh, cool thing, by the way, ranchers can milk baby cows. I think it's just detecting for cow. I don't know. Can you milk baby cows in regular Minecraft? I don't know. But this should be able to create um, four buckets now. So let's see. One, two, three. Oh, okay. Maybe not. I thought it could, but maybe not. Once it grows, uh, or once that cow grows, we should be cool. And then uh, we'll be able to get four every operation. But this way we can hang on to it. So now we have an automated way to make cake. Hooray! How cool is that? The Psychic Assembler is one of those blocks that, like, you kind of always forget its ability to auto-craft using liquids in its internal buffer, and it's such an awesome ability because it really makes it a lot easier. Without that, it would have been a lot more complicated to do that build. We would have had to set up something to automatically get milk buckets from the cows, put them in a crafting one, like, it's just a lot more effort, right? Like, now we've got this cool automated feature, and everything is good. All right, so we'll come back in a minute to turn these cakes into milk. All right, guys, currently working towards getting some of the runes that we're going to need for this new flower that I want to make. So we should drop these guys on here, and you should be 
ready. Nice. Then I think it's one of these, one of these. Go. Nice. Alright, once again I had to fly around to find the flowers I wanted, but I should be cool now. So, I believe that this is the flower I want to make. Uh, the Kekamiris requires some pixie dust, which I'll get in a minute. Uh, one white, one orange, and one brown each, but both brown need to be mana, so we'll need this. So both brown need to be mana. And then one orange needs to be mana and one white. Cool. And then of course we'll want some seeds. And I believe it's just one, one, two, one, 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 one. What'd I miss? Clearly I did something wrong. Oh, the pixie dust, that's right. Um, let's open up our portal. Get ourselves some ender pearls. Do I have any in here? Oh yeah, I do. Nice. Drop these all in. There we go. Nice. Come here, you guys. So we're going to demonstrate the Kekimuris here in a minute, and then we're going to talk about how we're going to do a little bit more with this. Now what did I miss? It's kind of hard to see. Too brown, too white, too orange. The root of gluttony. Actually, it does look like it's all in there, doesn't it? Just easier to break and replace. So let me just double check. Two brown, two orange, two white, pixie, and the rune. I probably missed this one to be honest with you. That's probably what it was. Yeah, I think that was it. One, one, two, one, 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 you and the seed. Nice. Refill. And maybe we'll look at automating some of these Batania crafting steps, because you know me. I like to automate stuff. Basky, she'll yell at me, but... There we go. And then one more. So four Kekamuras for now. And that should suffice. So let's talk about these guys. Uh, we're going to demonstrate this right now, actually. So we'll do cake. Let's pop down here and talk about how we're going to set this up. So the Kekamuris can do the following. We will put these here, 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 and here. And if we check, these should all be bound to that guy right there. Nice. So when we place down a piece of cake, oh, no, no. they eat the cake and they generate mana. And a decent amount of it at that. In my opinion, the Kekamuris is definitely one of the fastest and best ways of generating mana. Um, that's what I think. Uh, it, you know, I might be a little bit wrong on that, but I think it's definitely one of the best ways to do it. Obviously, there's a lot of steps involved in making cake, but we just automated all that, so kudos to us. So what we're going to do is come back next episode, and we'll rearrange some of the stuff down here. I'll probably get rid of, um, you can see the thermalilies have the visual indication there that they are burned out. So what happens to the thermalilies is they have like a cooldown period now where they can't just constantly convert lava to mana. They have to cool down every so often, and they're currently in their cooldown state. So if we right click, we'll see. I guess it doesn't show you, but the visual uh, effects there are showing the cooldown state is occurring. So it looks like, um, you know, a couple of them are actually running at the moment. A couple of them are in cooldown state, but mana from cake, definitely a good approach. So like I said, we'll come back next time. We'll check out how we're going to set this up. There's probably a few things we're going to want to get going before we can actually, um, you know, full blown do this. But, you know, trust me, there's going to be a, a bit of work to do with Batania and then we'll have a large amount of mana being produced. All right. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will be back next time for a little bit more fun. All right, guys, take it easy.